for me. They love me. Thank you. Welcome to Newsweek and the big news, art. <laughs> ah, we love art. So imagine our excitement at discovering the world's most famous photographs have been recreated in Lego. <laughs> What a bunch of evil bricks. <laughs> Shortly after this shot was taken, the brave Lego student disappeared. The neighbor's dog ate him. <laughs> then the Lego people's army tore the Lego democracy protesters to pieces and put them back in their box. <laughs> Remember this, victory over Japan day. World War II, a sailor kissing a nurse in Times Square. <laughs> It doesn't look all that consensual to me. In fact, it looks like she's shouting, Lego! 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 Or he's saying, I'm just trying to get my leg over. My leg over. My leg over. Oh, there's this shot from the depression of construction workers in New York. Uh, it's a little known fact that the guys in the original photograph also had plugs up their backsides to keep... <laughs> to keep them on the girder. And who can forget this iconic image of the Vietnam War? <laughs> ah, the brutality of an execution in smiley, kid-friendly form. <laughs> A Lego South Vietnamese police chief shoots a suspected Lego Viet Cong. This was just before the fall of Lego Saigon when Dad came home and trod on it. <laughs> Another famous shot from the 60s. <sighs> An hour later, the space recreation became even more realistic when Lego Armstrong accidentally ended up in a vacuum. <laughs> Last one. You'll never guess who this is meant to be. <laughs> oh, Charles and Diana. Oh, it's sweet. The Lego versions of Charles and Diana actually look like they're in love. <laughs> and I wish Di had been made of Lego. Not only could we have reassembled her after the crash, <laughs> we could have made her into a pirate ship or a space station. <laughs> According to a new book, former Russian President Boris Yeltsin once got so drunk in Washington he was found outside the White House in his underpants trying to hail a taxi to go and buy a pizza. <laughs> yes, his underpants. <laughs> For Boris, that was progress. <laughs> Bill Clinton would have sent one of his interns to get the pizza, but she couldn't find her underpants. <laughs> Luckily, Hillary wasn't around. Imagine the carnage if she'd heard, the president's making a run for it in his underpants. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the good old days of Yeltsin. If only Vladimir Putin drank this heavily, Russia could be 150 different countries by now. <laughs> the incident comes from a new book called The Clinton Tapes. It's an oral history, and surprisingly... <laughs> and surprisingly, doesn't suck. Good evening. Tonight, for your free-to-air viewing pleasure, the devil in disguise, Claire Hooper. The one true star of his one-man show, I'm not sure about the music, the thriller, Colin Lane. Hey. And coming to the world's funniest island festival in Sydney next week, then heading off on a country tour with the brilliant tripod, Stephen Gatesy Gates.
And they're getting cross with the Immaculate Conception, Mikey Robbins. <laughs> She's about to make a mess in the Celebrity Master Chef Kitchen. She has a new children's show starting this weekend on 10, and she's an ornament to Australian comedy, <laughs> Wendy Harmer. <laughs> and touring all over New South Wales in October with his excellent ice capades, the explosive Jim Owen. Uh, how are we all, Wendy? Tops. You good? Yes, good. It's going well for you at the moment. Yeah, yeah a bit of a purple patch, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top of the world, eh? Top, Top of the world. Yes, I've, uh, um, yes, and, 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 and. And I'm a bit surprised, though, that you brought out a children's yeah. animation. Yeah. Cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Because when I knew you back in the day, you were a bit of a rock chick. You were used to hanging out late, drinking oodles of grog. <laughs> Winging it with some of the finest fellas ever <laughs> to grace the comedy club. Her son's in the audience. Yeah, I know. <laughs> sure, it's nothing you haven't heard already. And, and if, if you want to buy the videos, I've got them. <laughs> you know what? That reaction says, there are videos. <laughs> Dude, everyone knows there are videos, don't they? <laughs> but, you know, I'm so old, Claire, they're all beta, so I'm fine. <laughs> There's a lot of children's authors in Australia. I mean, you know, you don't have to give up the substances just to be a children's author. Right. Yeah, you know, Norman Lindsay, The Magic Pudding, that guy yeah. was so not straight when he wrote that. <laughs> and Mae Gibbs, you know, the gumnut babies? Yeah. Absolutely whacked on eucalyptus leaves the whole time. <laughs> so, you know, you can keep up the bad habits and be a children's author. Have we got an example of uh, Pearly to show everyone? Well, I'm really, really, really thrilled about this because she's a big $10 million production and um, I've got a little bit of a clip uh, for you, Pearly. That'd be your Pearly there, would it? Yep. And it's one and only Excellency Prime Minister Puckle. Fairies, pixies, goblins, oh. one and all, welcome to this greatest of gatherings. Congratulations must go to Pearly the Park Fairy. Is it my imagination, or does the Prime Minister look uh, like our Prime Minister? <laughs> He's the Prime Minister of Fairyland, Prime Minister Puckle. <laughs> yeah, bit of a caricature. And there's a little bit of a caricature of me in there too, so I feel a bit like Bono in The Simpsons, you know. Like, I've got my own caricature in my own cartoon show, which is probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my career, I've got to say. And when does it, when does it start? When does it go out? 9.30 in the morning on Channel 10. 9.30 in the morning. So you're replacing David and Kim then? Is that the, uh, <laughs> that's how they're finding out, is it? Um, <laughs> no, no, heard it wrong. Saturday morning. Saturday start. morning. Saturday, Saturday and Sunday morning. Oh, Saturday and Sunday morning. Yes. Excellent. And Jamon, you're very busy at the moment. You're flying around the country. Are you? Yes. Are you, you're not on... You're not on ice, are you? No, 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 no. The show's called You're Born on Ice, but oh. I'm not really on ice. Oh. Or, or crystal meth, I'm not on crystal meth. <laughs> Great thing about being on crystal meth, only one more sleep to Christmas. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lane, Colin yes, Lane. Yes, Mr. McDermott. Yeah, how are you? How are you going? I'm very well, thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Yeah, a lot of love for you in the audience tonight, I noticed. Yeah, a lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of... A lot of love from half the audience and just a little bit of indifference from the other half, <laughs> which is always nice. And Stephen. <laughs> yes, you're, Paul. You're, you're away from the fellas. Well, he hello. <laughs> you're away right from the fellas. I know, it feels weird. They've yeah. been hanging onto your coattails for too long. I those try to tell them every time, I try yeah, to tell them. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Dead wood. Dead wood. Leave him. Leave him. Yeah. Just go solo, right? Just go solo, That's yeah. Hey, just, just a, 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 like, perform together for 20 years yeah. and then, and then just, just stop. And then stop. And then, and then, and then, cut, and then yeah. realise that you maybe shouldn't have. <laughs> maybe. Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, no. 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 And realise that. I uh, Frank's doing great. Yeah, he is doing great. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's doing tops. Yeah. Uh, he was on this show. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, got an email from my mum. You know, just the stupid yeah. things that make you happy. And she said, she said, I saw Frank on Good Newsweek with an awful haircut. And uh, you know, that makes me happy for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. I love him dearly. I love him dearly. When I talk to him on the phone, the sound of his voice does still make me feel physically ill. 
no, I love him dearly. He's, he's a lovely man. And let's stop talking about it. <laughs> Shall we begin? Yes, yes please! No, 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 just keep going with that. The first course tonight is a game called Spot the Ball. Three quotes from a story in the news, but only one was actually said. To take the point, spot the ball, find the truth. Claire, Colin, Gatesy. The yes. government is running a scare campaign claiming the coalition secretly wants to bring back work choices. According to Labor backbencher Nick Champion, it's time for Malcolm Turnbull to end the uncomfortable silence. What uncomfortable silence is he talking about? The uncomfortable silence you get when someone asks a fat woman if she's pregnant. <laughs> Done it, done it, done it, done it. The uncomfortable silence you get when someone backs over their cat. That's actually, that's the, that one of the first developments in the reversing camera in cars was just the, the cat. Yeah. That means you're getting close to the wall. Um, if, if, if you're really poor and you can't aff afford the camera on your four wheel drive, just gaff tape two cats to the back bumper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and finally, the uncomfortable silence you get when someone farts in an elevator. <laughs> what did Mr Champion say? Well, Us? Elevators are purpose built for uncomfortable silences. Like, yes. So a yes. fart is like a bit of a relief. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if everyone farts, it's a party. <laughs> um, is that what you do at your parties, yeah. is it? You just... <laughs> go home and have a few drinks and just fart. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. beans, everyone. Yeah. All right, here's, here's a piece of information for go. you. All right. The average human laughs 15 times a day. The average human farts 14 times a day. Hmm? You can't tell me that's a coincidence, right? <laughs> yeah. And what does that mean? 15th time wasn't a fart. <laughs> Wow, you just blew my mind. How many, how many of those laughs are actually about someone farting? Well, obviously... The has that been, have the numbers been crunched is what I want no, to know. No, the scientists maybe, cannot tell us yet. Maybe we can, we can go to CSIRO on this one at some other point. <laughs> We have a bit more time to really work it out. Right? The good one, the good one too, is when you run and do the run fart thing when you're going <laughs> running for a bus or something, and you just you just go off. Oh, she's all dick, and you're kind of keeps, farting as you're running. It's you kind moving, of yeah, you moving, it kind of propels you. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The best one is when you fart and then someone comes over to talk to you, so you run to them before they get to you. <laughs> but, but, the but it smell, comes with the you. Smell it goes with you. you. Got it, yeah. The smell goes with you. You can't. You actually have to walk. Hang on. I, and I then when you stop, minutes. it's got momentum. It goes past. Yeah, it goes. It goes. <laughs> you got to cut it off. You got to cut it. No, You're something. the one who brought farting into this. My wife loves it when I cupcake. <laughs> That's what a bum steer is, because you give the bum a bum steer, you go off. <laughs> yeah. That's a bum steer. Bum steer, maybe. I, I, yeah. I, if a woman is in hospital in the stirrups with the baby's head appearing, I still don't ask her whether she's pregnant. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, I just never, never, just don't ask the question. No. Even, oh, I don't, have you had, never. Don't, just avoid. When it, when, it happened, when it happened to me, I didn't even bother asking. I just said, oh, congratulations. Yeah. Did you when, really? When, when you were born. Did you really you, you, that? I did. You're I a mean, genius child. Yeah. You said congratulations she... to your own mum. I'm so uh, <laughs> Well done. No, great work. All the best. Great work. Well, that's all we've got time for tonight. Thank <laughs> you. Do we have an answer? The answer is don't start the first game with a fart reference. Yeah. <laughs> we, we all know backbenchers have nothing better to do than... Uh, fart. Bull <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's got to be the last one because that's where a backbencher would go. Let's just see if the Hooper team is right. It's time for Malcolm Turnbull to end the uncomfortable silence. The uncomfortable silence you get when someone farts in an elevator. <laughs> Classy, all class this show, but farting in the elevator is Turnbull's way of defending himself from being stabbed in the back. Uh, <laughs> parliamentary standards in Canberra are in the gutter. Tony Abbott recently declared the government had verbal diarrhoea, and Julia Gillard was wearing a shit-eating grin. <laughs> Could it be true? Has Gillard finally become a zombie and eaten Wilson Tucky's brains? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe we need a parliamentary swear jar. At this rate, they could use it to pay for the broadband network. <laughs> oh, right on, sister. Yeah. Yeah. But I have to admit, it'd be much more entertaining if our two major parties were called the Elevator Fathers and the Shit Eaters. <laughs> I wouldn't know who to vote for. <laughs> Mikey, Wendy, Jim, your spot the bull comes from the Sydney suburb of Gordon. Oh, yeah. Angry residents and the church are trying to stop a brothel opening next door to a McDonald's, which is very popular with the school kids. <laughs> well, hang, on, hang on, the McDonald's or the brothel? The McDonald's. Oh, the, McDonald's. Uh, the local reverend said the brothel was so close, they can almost reach around and touch it with their hands. Oh. <laughs> what did he say? They'll try to enjoy a hamburger with their friends and be left with a very bad taste in their mouth. What did he say? Oh, they could go in the wrong door and get a terrible shock. <laughs> what did the Reverend say? Broth a brothel next door to a church would be a good idea, because then you go in and then confess to the church. Mind you, though, a brothel next, to, next door to a Mac has been good too. Go and work up an ap appetite. Yeah, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't want the hookers eating junk food and getting fat. <laughs> Actually, hang on, hang on, come on. Come on, some people are chubby chasers, you know. That is a, that is a, that's a definite... Which is good because chubbies are easy to catch. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing is, if you put, if you put a Macca's next to a brothel, and it's good because if the Macca's is closed down for anywhere, if they close early, you can still go next door and get your all two beef patties and special <laughs> sauce. <laughs> Question. Do we well, know which one I don't it is? really know. What do you reckon, guys? What do you think? Actually, I met when I was um, Paul. You remember when, <laughs> when we I lived was at in, a brothel? We lived in. <laughs> we, we did, Paul and I used to share a house. <laughs> do you remember when we lived in Fitzroy and actually there was a brothel down the road? This is one of my favourite, favourite signs I've ever seen in front. And it had a little sign in the window which said, Rear entry if required. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <clears throat> I don't know. What do you think? The third one. I the, go the, 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 the third one sounds like a reverend, I yes. reckon. Yeah. Wrong. Get the other one. Are, they, oh, could the, they could terrible. go in. They could go in the wrong door and get a terrible, terrible shock. shock. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going with the third one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As a team. Because a priest, a priest would never say reach around. Let's see what. The <laughs> the <laughs> it's not a priest. It's a reverend. Oh, in that case. Let's see what the reverend had to say. They can almost reach around and touch it with their hands. That's how close it is. <laughs> A brothel next door to McDonald's. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you'll be able to have a happy meal with a happy ending. And think... <laughs> And think of the impression you'll make when you walk in with your quarter pounder in your hands. <laughs> yeah. 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 The local music teacher said a lot of teenagers hang around the area for lessons and it'd be terribly embarrassing if someone saw their dad coming out of there. Not to mention the emotional scarring if he came out holding hands with a clown and a big purple scrotum. <laughs> What they object to most is a sign outside the brothel featuring the golden arches with two little nipples on top. <laughs> Just quietly, they're also keen to get rid of it before anyone notices the brothel is statistically less harmful to children. <laughs> so after one infectious round of Good News Week, the Hooper team are on an untouchable 15 points. Team on nothing! Yeah. Coming up, the beautiful noise. During the break, as we found new things to do with a hot apple pie, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. Hooper, Lane, and Gates have. <laughs> <laughs> this is so heavy. 
I can't lift my eyebrows. <laughs> it's just too much. Well, look, I hate to say it, Hoops, but you, you look like the special kitty in the playground. <laughs> Not just with a safety helmet, but safety lights. <laughs> That would be funny though if you were an ambulance subscriber and that turned up at your house. <laughs> wee, 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 wee. I'm here. <laughs> ambulance backwards though. Well, that's jump good... on! <laughs> All right. No! So, I'm just joking, honey. <laughs> we also have a finger. Oh, in a kilt. It's got a uh, with a sparring yeah. with a yeah. with a with a. Have you got pants on or no pants? The lift. Oh. Oh yeah. boy. Yeah. Is that another little finger? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! And finally, we have this. What? Two. Uh, it's weird that I can count myself in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I'm not singing. No. So you okay? See. Oh. <laughs> so good. Hurts so good. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry. Broken nail. Sorry, I've broken. Very pretty. I've broken a nail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I broke it. I broke. Why have I got an accent on? <laughs> <laughs> I broke my nail. Oh. oh. <laughs> anyway. And yeah, Robin Tamer and McEwen got a wanted man. You found me! <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe Bin Laden's just got a fake beard, that's all it is. He <laughs> just, just takes it off and they don't recognise it. Yeah, you actually don't look fierce at all. <laughs> Oh. Just look like the anti Santa. <laughs> That's about it. You know. Well, look, if you're in bed, I'll come around and piss on your toys. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a nice dinner. Oh. Oh, no. Voila. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Cocker. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only joke I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone on top of the food. I know. And, uh, this. They try to make me go to rehab. I said, no, no, no. Yes, I've been black, but when I come back, you know, no, no. I ain't got the time, and my daddy thinks I'm fine. They try to make me go to rehab. I won't go, go. We'll find out what all that means at the end of the show. Right now, the game called Survey Says. Gatesy. Hello. Hi. A survey in New York has found 51% of residents are in favour of legalising public floggings, <laughs> same-sex marriages or everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know whenever I flog in public, this uh, <laughs> doesn't go down too well. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. Oh, I would say I would say everything. You know, New Yorkers. You know, they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty no. out there. And uh, oh, I would say I would say everything for the for the New Yorkers. Oh, they, they, you yeah. know, they like to think no. that they're pretty. No, no. no. Just, just, oh, look at Cole's team just, just say no. Definitive no. kind of negative no. You know what? Maybe, because maybe there just. Are a, I'm not sure New about Yorkers. that, Colin. Colin. Maybe have you thought about this? Colin, um, have you, well, just now, gonna, you're going to make an interesting mother. Uh, <laughs> Is this the right way to draw the draw the house? No! No, it's not! Go to bed! <laughs> what would you think? Uh, oh, wise All one. All I was going to say is there's things that New Yorkers would not legalise. You know, like, as in, sure, they're very... It's real, very arty and liberal, but, like... Mm. I was just thinking about... Well, stuff like... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, racial, they wouldn't legalise racial vilification. Or if people, you know, like people were stealing bagels, they wouldn't want that legal. All right, we get the concept, so we're striking off everything. We've still got two to choose everything. from. <laughs> and I'm certainly striking the public floggings. Yeah. Um, I've had shorter relationships in this game. <laughs> Okay, we're going for same-sex marriage, yes? Which one's Good. We're going for same, go number, to. number two, same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage. Let's have a look. Hey! According to a poll by research company UMR, 70% of Australians have a negative reaction to racism, foreigners, or Kyle Sandyland. <laughs> Only 70 for Kyle. Only 70. I, yeah. Now, all right, so here's my favourite thing about Kyle Sandilands. When we had our doubts about him, but we still let him have airtime, he was Kyle Sandilands. And I just love that you and others have now begun to call him Kyle Sandilands. <laughs> and I, I think that's punishment enough. Like, don't you reckon if everybody just refers to him as Sandilands, <laughs> doesn't that emasculate him beautifully? That's the perfect punishment. Sandilands, I like it. Sandilands. Yeah. From now on, he's Sandilandies. Sandilandamandies. Sandilandamandies. Like, <laughs> just sounds like a shit kind of housing development. <laughs> Sleep with your neighbour. Sleep with... <laughs> Sleep with your neighbour? What is he? Have we got keep, a... keep, keep the other two guys. Have we got yeah. a... Two foreigners, I reckon. <laughs> Just, foreigners. <laughs> Just yeah. in order to not, keep not, the games quick. No, in, in this, not me. All right. Not me. No. Oh, no, yeah. What have you got against foreigners? <laughs> You've grown that beard since this game started. I have actually grown as a person. Oh, nice. While nice. I've been listening. Uh, do we have an answer? Do we, Paul? Do we? Do we? Do we? Yeah. It's yeah. definitely one of the, one of those three. Yeah, I'll say foreigners. Let's say, say foreigners. Let's say foreigners. Lock it in, Dougie. Lock it in. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. <laughs> see, with the, with the reach around. Is that is that, Is all? that all? I'm disappointed in you, Australia. <laughs> no, but that's because we like him again because he's called Sandyland. Sandyland. <laughs> oh, it's a little cute car, Sandyland. Oh, what a little Should cute. Should make him wear a little bow, a big, a big bow tie. Yes, that spins. And mittens. And then we can call him, what? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a ball. Please, in the name of God, shut up. <laughs> uh, Jamoan. Yes. Your survey says starts in Queensland, where a majority of voters want to axe native title, old growth rainforest, or state MPs. <laughs> right. Then. You think? Quickly, quickly! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, on. Get, on. Oh, Get on with it! Jesus! Get on. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm cracking myself up. Yeah. Um, You're an asshole, Gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you another ten points. Yeah! <laughs> oh, very funny. Very funny. That's good. Okay. Why well, take your time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will take my time. Enjoy I have jokes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> State MPs, I say. State MPs. <laughs> Well, have they? Well, they, we only know one of them. We only know Anna Bly. That's the only no one we know. You're yeah, you're one more than me. That's the only. <laughs> oh, you've met her, haven't you? Well, uh, she's doing Master Chef. Yeah. She's cooking with Queensland produce. Oh, really? Yes. So, so you know, she's not... got so much time on her hands. Let's do a celebrity, a celebrity chef. Banana show. on a stick. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that'd be nice, I reckon. That'd be nice. I've yeah. had that. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it Sorry. State MPs? I say state MPs. But there's been disagreement. No, I'm... I'm no, I'm, we're with you. Yeah, 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 state yeah, MPs, yeah. let's have a look. Yeah. 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 I took my time. If we can believe a new poll from the UK, what does the average man do six times a day? <laughs> <laughs> Not since I was 14. <laughs> Sucks in his gut? Tells a lie or mentally undresses a co worker? 
I'm looking at you when I said this last one, Mark. <laughs> I think it's mentally undressed as a co-worker because I don't think a lot of men have the ability to actually tell when they're lying and then and they're not. I can't mentally undress co-workers in my job. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit weird. Oh God, no! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Can you imagine like... a little Yoni with it? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I mean, let's face it. You're the cute one. And <laughs> thank you, Mikey. <laughs> Uh, you undress yourself, don't you? You mentally, mentally, mentally undress yourself. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You know, a bloke had to actually sort of take a questionnaire for this, and they would have lied. So yes. that makes it. That and I've never it. mentally undressed anyone. They've just been naked. <laughs> Suck in your um, gut, then. Suck in your gut. Suck in your gut. Now, they ask, I mean, you know, I mean, here I am sitting next to two uh, uh, fellas here. Do you, are you sucking in your gut six times a day? Or are you just... I did that thing right, or I came out of the shower and just, my wife was there and I, I did the high tile, you know, when, on, yeah. you know, and then I pulled the, you know when you pull your traction punch on really high? Yeah. Just for a laugh? Yeah. I couldn't believe how comfortable it felt. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, oh, this is nice. I, 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 I love getting my tracky pants up so high. I've got a mangina. <laughs> I've seen that website. <laughs> ah, yes, right, my camel toe. <laughs> there comes, there actually, Jimo, and now there does come a, blo a time in a bloke's life, and you might be there where he pulls his undies up there and goes, oh, boy, geez, that feels bloody comfortable. <laughs> I might go out and tinker with the mower. <laughs> You could be at that age. You know, and they become sort of sad and rambly and don't get to the <laughs> point. <laughs> oh, right, the guy. I don't know, mate. What do you want, Jim? What do you want, Randy? What do you want? Well, I, I, re I reckon uh, I mentally undress as a co worker. Yeah, we're going with Wendy. Let's have a look, see if they're right. Oh! The only one we didn't play with. The only one we didn't touch. <laughs> Uh, yes, a British study has found that men lie twice as often as women. Oh, we do not. <laughs> and women are not, women are not innocent by any means. Faking an orgasm is a lie, but who cares? Uh, <laughs> women, thanks oh, fellas, oh, thanks fellas. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> women come uh, out with just three lies a day, each one lasting approximately eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's true, ladies. The survey found the most common lie is, nothing's wrong, I'm fine. <laughs> also common was, I swear I'm not banging the lie survey woman. <laughs> lie survey woman? The lie survey woman. Is, uh, she, is she as hot as the brand power lady? Oh, the brand power lady. The brand power lady, she came in, I think it was 50, about 50th in the FHM six sexiest women survey, the brand power lady. There's a lot of blokes. Sitting up at three o'clock in the morning and <laughs> fantasising about chucks, as far as I can see. I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh, quite simply, you see the brand power lady, you're going to need that chuck sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> the hoop is now on an unassailable 35 points. Yay! The Robins is on a miserable 10 points. of the Titans, Colin Lane and Wendy Harmer at the front. <laughs> Our two stars will face each other on the field of current affairs. First in with the buzzer gets the points and remember your names oh. are your buzzers. Let's oh. check those buzzers now. Which... Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Do they, do they have to be our names, or can it just be something like, like nice and taut and, you know, brief? Like, like any other word, you know? What other word would you like rather than your name? Uh, just establishmentarianism. <laughs> would, would that work? That'd be good, Tom. That'd be good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. try your buzzer? Yep. Disestablishmentarianism! <laughs> <laughs> can I take points off if you don't actually get the word right? <laughs> it's your show, Paul. Do whatever you want. All right, okay. 
Do you want to go with disestablishmentarianism? Yep. Don't you want it to be... What if, what if I go disestablish... She goes, Wendy! Like, <laughs> does, does she... I think yes. cut in? Yes. You take the point, I, yeah. I, I, yes, yes, I get to go. Yes. yes, he makes the rules, Wendy. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Not you, sister. It's not a, it's, can I call you sister? I'm just like, hanging. I just want to get the lounge suite. That's what I'm looking for, you know. It's, is there, is there, are there prizes? There's no prize. Never been prized and never will be prizes. This is oh, well, this shit. Is <laughs> Kind of silence. Oh, so anyway. Here we go. You're moving closer to me every time. I'd like to be close to you <laughs> so I can see the questions. That, I think that little black one, that little black one. Demarcation, you'll be put some of the for the cameras, job. otherwise they can't see you. Yes, goose. Okay. Right. okay. <laughs> Who is the captain of the Australian Diamonds? D <laughs> Wendy, 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 Sherelle McMahon. I ha ask me how I know that. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> how silly of me to have thoughts of my own. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how do you know that, well, Wendy? You know, I was looking at this the other day. <laughs> Just ask the next question. Well, oh, how do you know about <laughs> I want to hear I wanna, the I wanna know. answer to the no, question no, no, I wasn't going to ask that I was told I was to ask, but now I'm asking. Because she's, she's the captain of the, you netball, you know, the netball team. They just got the name of Diamonds. And I was yep. looking at this thinking, you know, what, the reason you don't really hear about women's sports is because women's sports people, don't, they don't have good nicknames. You know, like, you know, bloke sports, they have cement, they have plugger, you know, all these great names. And the women have things like Sherelle. And I think women should come up with better nicknames, sort of like, you know, the flying tampon or something. <laughs> or, or, say, varicose or crow's feet or something like that. And that'd be, that'd be good. I've just taken away your first five points there. Number two. And Chevelle, you know. She's a flying cool. tampon. That's a, be good. It's like a whole new airline. You know. It? Well, you know. With Marge. a little trail of string yeah, out I the know. back. <laughs> yeah, it's a jet stream. So. Marjorie, with, yeah, with wings. Yeah, with wings, yeah. And <laughs> pray to God you don't have a water landing. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Hudson River gone? Yeah. <laughs> it's gone! It's gone! Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, but you only crash once a month. <laughs> yes. um. Yeah. Which European president is currently suing the country's former prime minister? Disestablishmentarianism? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Ni Nicholas Zarko Zarkozy. Yeah, Zarkozy. Yes. Zarkozy? Yes. Of, uh, of France. Thank you very much, you guys. <laughs> Who are Sarah Jane Clark and Heidi Middleton? This is. Wendy, 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 Wendy. Oh, hard to tell. Oh, geez, actually, sure. Sass and because this is actually a Sass and Bide shirt that I have on this minute. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it is indeed. Wow. That's how, <laughs> that's how I knew. Don't that's... even start. <laughs> because you will not be happy with where it ends, I promise. And what should I be doing at this point? <laughs> Do you have to slam your hand down, or can you just say the, the name? You can just the... say the name. Okay. It's weird, though. People feel like slamming their hand yeah, down. No, But really, as you see, there's no buzzer anywhere. <laughs> no, there's no buzzer. But she likes to... Yeah. Wendy, just, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy! I'm just hoping. I'm just That's, hoping. that's just how you hoping. got your animation on Channel 10. Some, yes, I am! <laughs> Give me a fucking deal, Channel 10! <laughs> I just want some cheese. <laughs> Do you? Yes, that's... 
weird well, thing I'm to say. I'm cracking this thing <laughs> because it's, I'm trained to hit things. Now shut up. What's the cheese reference? I'm saying I'm trained like a lab rat to hit this. I'm just hoping some cheese comes oh, out. Oh, I see. Um, I see, yeah, interesting. Fine. It's funny. I, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah, move I on. I couldn't yeah, yeah, connect the yeah, two. Yeah, move on, move just, on. Move talk, on. Over talk, talk over me. Go talk over me. Go talk over me. Talk over me. Go Go over me. Go over me. Go over me. Who is the Palestinian president? Wait. Just have a series! <laughs> See, your word's too long. <laughs> See, you thought you were being smart, but my word's short and I got in. <laughs> Pack of death. Mm. <laughs> ah. It's like kindy with red cordial kitties. <laughs> the president of the Palestinian personages is mm, a, a reminds with Hamas Abbas Mahmoud Abbas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mahmoud Abbas. Mahmoud. Mahmoud. One of the interesting things about Mahmoud Abbas is sometimes is you never see him and then five of him come along. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. That was the world. Don't patronise me, Lane. Really don't patronise me. All right. You know, okay. you had yeah. a partner yeah. and you patronised him and he left. Yeah. But, right. you know. Oh. <laughs> Le least Wait. I had one? <laughs> oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, which Australian <laughs> singer's new album is called As Day Follows Night? Wendy. <laughs> no idea. Sarah Blasco. Sarah Blasco. Sarah Blasco. Of course, you know, actually, some of us do have the confidence to work by ourselves and some of us need to be propped up just a little bit. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. If you yep. want to just go out there and go, I'm the star. Um, <laughs> instead of actually, you know, sharing. Standing in the background and, you know, bitching, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting dangerous. <laughs> this is really taking interesting yeah. steps. Yeah. 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 Who won the Brownlow medal? Sesame <laughs> Series! <laughs> Gary Ablett, although Brendan Vivola, Vivola, he won Best Pissed Idiot. I think you could have been first, but I... Like... No, but I didn't say my She didn't my say name, Wendy, but... she just goes like that. Oh. Cheese! <laughs> why didn't I just think... Why didn't I just say cheese? No, yeah. it's too late now. It's too late. Let it go. It's it gone. is too late. Yeah. Too late for you. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. That didn't mean... The world's oldest man recently celebrated his birthday. What age is he? Wendy... <laughs> 113. Disestablishmentarianism, 112. 113. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Wendy Harmer and Colin Lane. <laughs> the world's oldest man, Walter Bruning, has celebrated his 113th birthday with a party and a cake at a retirement home in Montana. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Walter said, I don't see any difference between 113 and 10 years ago. And I think once you reach 100, the world is pretty much just muffled blurry blobs. <laughs> And the odd sponge bath. <laughs> Walter doesn't drink, smoke or have sex and he wishes he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in 1896. He's so old he remembers when they first discovered ankles. <laughs> when asked if he believed in life after death, Walter said yes, but I hope it doesn't go on as long as this. <laughs> Hot 
I have the big questions about the news of the week in my hand. They have the hot spot and nothing but their wit and charm hardly seems fair. Are you all ready? Yes. When Kevin Rudd is drunk in his undies, where is he normally found? <laughs> Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, are you all right? I'm fine. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, oh, there was a two millimeter <laughs> lid <lead> next to you. <laughs> so we should have had a rail. I had a rail. <laughs> 113, you look great. Fantastic. Half a dog, I say. It's not important where he actually is, but he thinks he's the Prime Minister of Fairyland. <laughs> oh. Nice. What was it? What was the questioning? It was it? When Kevin Rudd is drunk in his undies, where is he normally found? McDonald's, but he meant to go next door. <laughs> This isn't very rude, so you won't like it. Give us a question again. When Kevin Rudd is drunk, in his undies, where is he normally found? In his undies. <laughs> Yay! Give us the question again. <laughs> What's the worst thing you've eaten while drunk? Kevin Rudd's underpants. <laughs> Can it be, can it, can it be, not, not me, but a mate? Yeah, can it? <laughs> um, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure at, it was. A uh, uh, meat pie out of a rubbish bin at the footy. Oh. <laughs> that was Go, Justin. <laughs> How should we punish badly behaved politicians? Make them live in Canberra. <laughs> Make them stand outside Parliament in their underpants. <laughs> Get out of the footy with Gatesy's mate. <laughs> what are the benefits of having a brothel next door to a McDonald's? You go in in your underpants to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Sexiest words a woman can say. You want fries with that? <laughs> um, while the adults uh, eat their meals, they can leave the kids playing in the balls. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> what fast food chain should be next door to a brothel? Oh, <laughs> Subway. <laughs> Footlong subs. Oh. Of course. KFC finger licking good. <laughs> Any like late night food establishment that keeps its meat on a spit? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> Have you been doing that the whole show? It's like a death rattle coming out of it. <laughs> Feller up the back, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, enough of the high pitch laughing. You sound like a woman, all right? <laughs> uh, what's one lie men tell every day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> oh... <laughs> oh, you wanted a response to that question. <laughs> um, I am a female runner. <laughs> hey. uh, gee, this has never happened to me before. <laughs> uh, what's the best lie you've ever told? Oh, yeah. I know heaps about current affairs in the news. <laughs> uh, Paul, mate, he's, a, he's a pleasure to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, he's a really giving performer. <laughs> Cold 
straight. <laughs> I'd turn for Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, 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 Cole was the top. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> what would you like to strap to Kyle? A brain. <laughs> Usually, let him go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lie detector. Oh, no. Maybe. Yeah. Nice. Nice. What's God's favourite game? Um. Ouija. <laughs> uh. yeah. My godly. It's like Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Pin the sun on the cross. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Strange the crew is next. <laughs> For our last show of the year on November 23, we'll be presenting the 2009 GNW Awards. And we want you to vote for them. We'll announce a new set of nominations every week. All you have to do is go to the website. The first category is entertainment, and the nominees are... Claire Werbeloff, the Chick Chick Boom girl for services to fat wogs, skinny wogs, and they're fully sick boys. <laughs> Twitter, the riveting social network which continues to prove every day that opposable thumbs are not a right, they're a privilege. <laughs> Our wonderful friends at the ABC who are too stupid, lazy, or incompetent to do their job and yet hung the chaser out to dry for doing theirs. <laughs> And Richard Wilkins of the Channel 9 Today Show for their fine work on the morning of Michael Jackson's death. Not only did Wilkins exclusively announce that Jeff Goldblum was dead too, he wasn't, they also played an old montage of Jacko which finished with Richard's voiceover, this man is a unique talent, we can't wait to see what he comes up with next. <laughs> You've got seven days to vote for your favourite at 10.com.au slash GNW. Don't forget, last show of the year, November 23. Put it in your diaries or whatever it is you kids have today, all right? <laughs> See you there. <laughs> Time to reveal all that strange but true goodness. Claire Colin Gates, you had the ambulance. <laughs> oh, yeah, sexy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we also have the finger. Took me 50 minutes to come up with that. I think I'm Carl, Carl, that does not look good. Biting the fingernails, I'm nervous. Get that for later. Well, that's not going back to the Natural History Museum now, is it? Oh, no. Yes, God. And finally, <laughs> this. Oh, they thought hurt so good. Come on, baby, make it hurt so good. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. Make it hurt so good. Good. 
Do we have an answer? I have no idea what the three of these have in common. <laughs> Anybody? Could it be the um, statistic recently, and I can't remember the number, but there was some sort of incredible number of workplace accidents where people burning their fingers when oh. they went into their cup of tea or coffee to rescue a biscuit they dropped in. <laughs> I mean, I'm not confident, obviously, <laughs> but it could be Biscuits. Scotch, oh, Scotch yeah. finger. Oh. Go in to rescue it, burn the finger, go to the emergency room. Singing a John it? Cougar song. Yes. <laughs> you know, that hurts so good refers to, well, it hurts, but I'm not at work anymore. <laughs> I actually heard that song uh, for the first time when I was nine, Hurt So Good, and I remember asking my mother, how does something hurt so good? <laughs> She smacked you and went, ooh, that's good. <laughs> that feels good. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know which country the story comes from? Something to do with the English. Yes. Like, 50% um, of English people uh, get injuries uh, from, from eating. <laughs> Um, for like biscuits, yes, because um, they're, they're they're shocked actually because they're in England and they're actually you know it's it's kind of they're surprised because it's edible. Um. <laughs> yes. According to new figures from the UK, about 500 people a year receive hospital treatment for biscuit-related injuries. <laughs> And they wonder what's become of the British Empire. <laughs> Even worse, biscuit incidents actually cost the lives of several thousand men, many of them gingerbread. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of the 500 injured, 29% are scalded by hot drinks while dunking, and 28% choke on crumbs. <laughs> you gotta love the Poms, they could murder a Monte Carlo, and apparently vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> A handful of injuries also occur because the British prefer to enjoy afternoon tea while dressed in rubber and nipple clamps, slowly asphyxiating themselves while dunking for maximum biscuit pleasure. <laughs> Don't go away, more strange but true coming right up. Mikey, Wendy, Jim, you had The Wanted Man. Uh, it's been a long show, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A nice dinner. Felix, what's a tent? And this. Ooh. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to need a little backup work, boys and girls. Behind me, thank you, The Flying Wedge. to make me go to rehab I said no, no, no Yes, I've been black but when I come back you know, no, no I ain't got the time and my daddy thinks I'm fine He's trying to make me go to rehab I won't go
bloody rehab. No one's going to get made. Actually, Jesus, here's a bill. Quick, grab the stash, everybody. Move down the block, quick. <laughs> it's time for me to go to rehab. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. Thanks. Uh, 150 points to Mikey's team. Thank you! Whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, hey. Be That's careful down there. there. <laughs> it's like a bloody barbecue, isn't it, though? All the fellas have wound up on one side. And the <laughs> side. <laughs> what is the story? Does anyone know what the story is? All right, yes. so we've got oh, yeah. rehab. Rita. And we've got a terrorist, and we've got a very, very nice dinner. So, well... Uh, Master Chef goes to Guantanamo Bay. Looks amazing. This is a story about uh, convicts who would be better rehabilitated instead of going to prison uh, if they were taken out for dinner and just oh. talked about <laughs> the wrongs of their way. Yes. Where do you take a terrorist for dinner? <laughs> Oh, it's a little place called 76 Virgins. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them have the bomb Alaska, though. That's yeah. Where do you go after dinner? Into the witness protection programs, where you go after... Uh, yeah, there's the, the Indonesian story that... Is it? Uh, oh, the, no, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, the, rather than sending terrorists off to jail, the, all, all they really need is to take them out for a nice meal, have a chat, rehabilitate them. Who said this? Some nut job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to go with that, really. Uh, they do have it, sadly enough. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> a senior official from the Department of Foreign Affairs says taking terrorists out to dinner may prove more effective than locking them up without charge. No. Preferably to restaurants that use plastic forks. <laughs> Ambassador Bill Patterson referred to Indonesia's practice of taking jailed terrorists out for rehabilitation. If dinner goes well, flowers, chocolates, and if you really like them, back to your place for a naked human pyramid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> they even play party games after dinner to try to work out which of the suspects is guilty. The most revealing is Twin Towers Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you don't like that one, don't listen to this one. <laughs> no, no, no. Another extremist was uncovered while feeding his baby. It was obvious he was guilty because each spoon of Here Comes the Aeroplane ended up crashing into the child's head. <laughs> Stay tuned, Freedom Fighters. Fast Money is next. It's news week. Here it is, the game he'll never let us forget, Kevin Rudd's Fast Money. In the Middle East, a suicide bomber failed to kill one of the Saudi royal family when his TNT went off early. Where was it hidden? True. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. In his uh, laundry. No. Toilet. No, it was on his person. Uh, around, uh, up his bottom. <laughs> Are you we should sadly have it. You have it. Oh. Oh. That was the first thing I was going to say, but I felt ashamed of myself. So I didn't, I didn't feel ashamed of myself. <laughs> you feel ashamed of yourself at this point in the show? <laughs> in San Diego, a man in his 70s wearing a white beret and an argyle sweater uh. is wanted for bank robbery. What else was unusual about this crook? That is ridiculous. <laughs> he had a fluffy white dog. No. Pink aviator glasses. No. Lotus. He had a grenade up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was carrying an oxygen tank. Oh. That's weird, eh? Of course. Yes. He was in his 70s. He couldn't be... <sighs> He's only a whippersnipper. That other bloke was 113. He's barely... He wasn't robbing the bank. Uh. In Staffordshire. Blood bank. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just being a twit. <laughs> Not difficult. <laughs> in Staffordshire, a couple who moved to a new suburb went back to check on their old house before putting it on the market. What did they discover? It was gone. No. It was it was different. 
Yes. It was. Yes. It was. It was. It had. It had. It had, a, it had a renovation. Cool. Almost. Oh. It was further back. It was further back on the block. No. It, no. It, it, it had been. It had been restumped. I something. Sense. You're just People guessing. People have moved in already. People have no. moved in already. No. no. Something was stolen. Yes. The yes. house was stolen. Yes. The close. windows. Very close. The doorknobs. Are we going to keep guessing until we get it right? I don't know. It's, it is fast money. It's taking a long time to get know. this. We don't know. We don't know. You know, anyone know? Something was missing. Something was yes. stolen. Yes. I'm going to give it to you. Something Sorry. was missing. That's was, it, was it the garden? Garrod. It was the garden. Oh. I'll give you two points. Nice. Oh, yes. You listen to me. Yes. What was it? The next door neighbour had stolen the entire back garden, including the path, rockery pots, hanging baskets, and a shed worth about 1,200. Even the flowers were dug up and replanted, leaving nothing but a stretch of dirt. And so, he just planted them in his joint. Yeah. Grabbed them, took them. There you go. Stuff you, you get on. Oh, you pack it in. In Florida, yeah. when he heard his dog attacking a burglar, Robert E. Thompson jumped out of bed and held the intruder at gunpoint until police arrived. What was unusual about Mr. Thompson? Uh, Oxygen tank. Was 76, I think, and naked. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so what, what are you threatening with his long dangly testicles? He, well, he could have had long dangly testicles. He was, in fact, 91. Oh, well, something like that. That's well in your oh, you know, well, yeah. demographic for long dangly he, he, he testicles. Could have, he could have choked them with them. Bolero was drunk, so it was even. Okay, last one I'm going to throw open to everyone. Yep. In Alabama, an 11 year old boy who received a bad report card bah, came up with Wendy. a Wendy! Creative... <laughs> <laughs> <Who's... laughs> I'm going to give you five points for that as well. <laughs> but I do get to answer it, right? Yeah, answer it. Uh, he faked his own kidnapping. She does have it, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <Hey. laughs> Who won? So in the dungeon tonight, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> so in the dungeon tonight, Claire Hooper, Colin Lane, and Gates has scored a restrained 107 points. Yeah. Whipping Mikey Robbins, Wendy Harmer, and Jim Owen on 70 points. What? Uh... That is the biggest trouncing. Ever. Oh, thanks a lot. So what, we're just like some... I eat me out of it. ...drag <laughs> behind you, Mikey. Sorry. As they fight amongst themselves, we'll leave the show for this week. 10.com.au slash GNW is the place to get the podcast, see the special stuff and cast a ballot for the 2009 GNW Awards. Remember, your vote can make a difference. It probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> so we say danger, biscuits, and leave you... <laughs> <laughs> and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. Thomas the Tank Engine will be live in Canberra and thousands of children will rush the stage in the hope of catching him to somewhere better. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. I love Canberra. Oh. <laughs> Wolf Mother will release their new album, Sabbath Want Their Riffs Back. <laughs> cool. Cool. Why, why do that? Sydney will host the Australian Event Awards and win the Australian Event Australian Event Award for hosting the best Australian Awards event event. <laughs> Simon Cowell will turn 50 and Susan Boyle will jump out of a cake to perform a raunchy rendition of Happy Birthday to You <laughs> dressed only in enormous underwear <laughs> and it's the broadcasting industry's Night of Nights the commercial radio awards with a new category Smallest Talent by a Fat Bearded Wanker <laughs> <laughs> Who would it be? Good night! Thank you.